Tropical Depression 10 formed on Saturday evening and by Sunday late morning we will likely see our next tropical storm in the Yucatan Peninsula about to head into the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the latest in our tropical map. We have Tropical Depression 10, Hurricane Franklin, two other tropical waves with low chances of development, but I want to focus the attention on TD 10. This is winds at 35 miles per hour. Hurricane Center 8 o'clock update said this thing is on the cusp of becoming a tropical storm. So I wouldn't be surprised at the 11 o'clock update if we see that issued and they have multiple multiple Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance issues sched, uh, uh, schedules rather scheduled to go into this storm system today. And they'll do that not just heading into the storm, but they're going to sample the atmosphere up in the northern Gulf of Mexico. I mean, all resources are being put into this storm to make sure that we really nail down the track and the intensity track of what this system could do as it makes its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, here's what the future radar and satellite might look like over the coming days. This is one of our in-house models, but I want to show you that for the next 24 hours, it's not having a whole lot of forward movement northward quickly. However, once we get into Tuesday, Wednesday time frame, this thing picks up the forward movement as it's influenced by a little dip in the jet stream, a trough of low pressure almost gets slingshotted northward. So the speed of it will swiften as we make our way into Tuesday time frame, closing in on landfall. And this particular model, you see how you see that well-defined eye. We've got the feeder bands that are on the east side of it. This is just a picture of what that radar and satellite might look like. But what I want to focus on is this warm water in the Gulf of Mexico out ahead of it because this is often one of those uh, things that we have to look at very closely when we have landfalling potential landfalling tropical systems. We got very warm water. So this is like a bathtub 89 off of the coast of Pensacola 88 there off of the coast of Apalachicola 89 off of uh, Tampa's uh, waters and we've had some record warm ocean surface temperature waters or Gulf surface temperature waters in parts of Florida so far this season. There hasn't been a tropical system move over this particular part of the Gulf this year uh, recently. So we have not just the surface that is warm, but there is some depth to that ocean heat content when you get to that part of the Gulf of Mexico as well. So these are all things to be factored into uh, signs pointing towards this thing will definitely uh, probably become a hurricane. And right now the official uh, cone from the Hurricane Center has it becoming a tropical storm today. Then you see how those lines uh, as we get into Tuesday versus Wednesday morning, you see how they're getting further apart. That's because the forward movement picks up right now. This thing's moving southeast at five miles per hour. It's just kind of meandering there, not far from Cancun. But as we get into the time frame of Monday then versus Tuesday versus Wednesday, it speeds up. And we want it to speed up because the less time it has over water, the less strengthening it can do. Um, so we'll just see eventually how strong this thing can get. But that cone of uncertainty where the landfall will happen, you notice it's along the big bend of Florida. Don't pay attention to the center necessarily. That landfall could happen anywhere within the cone of uncertainty from the northern side of the Tampa Metro all the way back towards Panama City area, Emerald Coastline. Impacts can be felt well outside the center. You notice as it moves inland, it'll weaken, but the center of this thing likely tracks over southern Georgia. So will we see impacts here in northern Georgia? I think we could. Now let's talk about the steering currents before we do so, because models have had a slight jog westward in the last 24 hours with where that landfall is going to be. And the where it heads factor has to do with the positioning of, there we go, let me fix this right here, the positioning of this jet stream as it steers it and veers it to the east. So how does this come up? How quickly does it come up versus how deep is this trough or this dip in the jet stream? Those are the things all of our weather models are trying to still resolve here on this Sunday morning. Here's what the spaghetti models put it right now. You notice that there's a large cluster of these models that are pinpointing Emerald Coast over to Apalachicola. Less of the models showing this eastward track within that cone of uncertainty. So again, this morning versus yesterday evening, we're seeing another one of those slight jogs westward. The further west that this heads, that would mean likely more influence on our weather here across North Georgia. Now, all of these models take it east of us and an eastward track of our area means, yeah, we might get some rain from this, but we likely wouldn't see uh, the 
dirty side of the storm move over us and that dirty side of the storm is where we see the severe weather component with these systems and we typically see the stronger winds. So what about rainfall? Well, I'm going to show you two different models to compare things. European model right there and here's the American model right here. There are some differences with where these storms have the center of the system going. That GFS American model has the center of it going a little further west and that would pull some of the heavier rain component closer into our area. The European, this is seven day rainfall, so it also includes what scattered storm activity we get today, tomorrow, Tuesday in advance of the system. The European says, you know what, on average over the next week, we might get one to maybe two inches. The, the GFS, the American model, it pulls the track of it a little further westward. So that brings some of that heavier rain component where we could see three to five inches into some of our eastern counties. So really what you need to take away is this is a storm system we got to watch. It's forecast to become a tropical storm, forecast to become a hurricane. A lot of warm water working out ahead of it. That means it could become uh, even more than Category 1, even though that's not the official cone of uncertainty right now. Landfall is likely somewhere along that big bend of Florida over to the Emerald Coast. We will see some impacts here in North Georgia. Will it just be a little bit of light rain or could those rain amounts be higher? We just don't know yet, and that will depend on where the track of this thing eventually goes. So a lot to be diving into in the coming days. Elsewhere in the tropics, we have Franklin. Franklin uh, is a category one storm right now, became the second hurricane of the season Saturday. And this thing will become a major hurricane by early Monday. And you notice here where it heads is likely west of Bermuda. But with this thing becoming a major hurricane, growing in size, growing in intensity, this thing's going to churn up the uh, surf on the east coast as well. So there's two different storm systems that are going to contribute to uh, rough surf on the east coast, higher rip current risk. And we also have a full moon, by the way, coming up on Wednesday. That can lead to stronger gravitational pulls and higher than normal high tides. So we will be talking eventually about some storm surge impacts from the system moving into the Gulf. But even ahead of that, with Franklin out in the east, we've got some rough surf that's going to be in a higher rip current threat that's going to be a factor. Two other tropical waves likely don't have high chances of development here in the next week. Hurricane Center 8 o'clock update giving the one coming off the African coast a 20% chance of development. So we are headed to peak of hurricane season, tropics show it right now. All of our eyes are really on Tropical Depression 10, which will become Idalia later today. And that storm forecast to become a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico.